Thank you for turning to page 121. Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to talk about a traveler licensee that uh, was only a brief licensee, but uh, I feel a significant one. They were licensee from about 1979 to 1982. Today I bring you Judges Guild and their various products. Very prolific company, uh, considering they're only a traveler licensee for a few years. Some of my favorite early stuff came out of their uh, workshop. Uh, and it's, it's just some fun stuff to have. The map I have here is Lay Sector from their four sector guidebook series, which has all the uh, UWPs, the Universal World Profiles, and there you go, and shows the mains and everything else that would be present here. So the mains are there. These took place over by Gateway Sector, which actually gave us an opportunity to adventure in another place other than the Spinward Marches. Uh, it's kind of, if you look at the map, the Spinward Marches are here, Gateway's over here. These aren't Gateway, but they're right next to it. Uh, these were fun. I, I really liked these four. Um, we had Lay Sector, which I've already shown, Glimmer Drift Regions, Crucis Margin, these are all sectors, <clears throat> and Rananthal Alcast Sector. That's a hard one to say. Each of these brought out a full sector with these big fold-out maps, which have info on the other side as well. There's some planets for you with the old uh, orange peel cutaway to show a sphere. Uh, it, they were just good, useful products to have. Uh, I did some gaming in the in the area of these books. I, in fact, set a couple of campaigns in the 80s in these sectors simply because I had the books for them. So Judges Guild, as I said, was a licensee for primarily D&D. They started with D&D in the late 70s and ran with D&D into almost the mid-80s. And in addition to being a D&D licensee, they were a traveler licensee. Now, I have to confess, I was not a huge fan of Judges Guild D&D stuff. Uh, I don't know why. I, it never rang with me. I have no reason other than it just never, never landed with me. Their traveler stuff did. They did, in addition to these excellent sectors, they did a bunch of different adventures. Rogue Moon on Spinstorm, Marooned on Ghost Ring, Darkling Ship, and Wasp Winter, among many others. They were a very prolific company. With Wasp Winter in particular, you got a big old map. This big old map shows the planet's surface. And this thing's a beast. And these were about five to six dollars each. So it's kind of hard to yeah, Wasp Winter was six dollars. It's kind of hard to improve on that in the early 80s. You're getting these huge maps and the adventure. For less than what TSR was charging, or right about what, what TSR was charging for a module at the time. Uh, heck, Darkling Ship was $4. It's, it's amazing to me that they put this, this stuff out and it was this cheap. Lay Sector was $4.98. Now, the, before I go too much further, a couple of you are saying, wait a minute, those aren't canon anymore. Yes, you're right. All four of these... Uh, sectors have been decanonized, uncanonized, discanonized, whatever word we use. They are no longer canon and have been written over many, many times. Uh, so what? Take what you like, leave the rest. That's always been my theory in DMing. Uh, anything that offers traveler written info can be ported into any milieu you're, you're running, whatever era it is, and I really feel it's worth having. Uh, I've been a big traveler collector for uh, a lot of years now, since the early 80s. Uh, and to me, if it's traveler, it's worth reading. There are some editions of traveler I haven't been a huge fan of. Uh, the era itself, New Era, as you know if you saw my previous video, I'm not a massive fan of New Era. That didn't keep me from reading and enjoying the, the product and taking a lot of the ideas into my game. Particularly the idea of a, and basically what amounts to be an ancient blunderbuss being able to penetrate tech level 12 battle armor, which is one of the sub-themes in one of the adventures in Traveler of the New Era. I like that idea. I thought it was kind of cool. 
so that actually made its way into mine. Uh, somebody introduced some slightly improved rifling techniques, uh, a la the Star Trek episode of Private Little War, and uh, was giving some natives an one up over their enemies, and the travelers were caught in the middle. I moved that game to Third Imperium, but it still worked. It was a, on an amber world, and the player characters were there for reasons and got involved in this conflict between the two, uh, the two groups. So, anywhere you can get traveler information, in my opinion, it's at least worth a look. Uh, you may not like all the writing or all the offerings from the uh, company, but it's still worth a look. So, again, I'm a big fan of the Judges Guild products, even though even the decanonized sectors. Uh, they were totally worth owning for me. Uh, I just, that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm very positive on the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s offerings from Judges Guild. And I admit that some of their covers looked a little primitive, even by standards then. And I think that hurt their marketing a little bit. And I know going forward into the 80s, as TSR got more professional, and their, their especially their inner maps and things got sleeker looking, their illustrations were better. I know that that kind of hurt Judges Guild in the marketplace. That was probably one of the things that led to the decision to not renew their traveler licensing. licensing. Um, there were a lot of Judges Guild stuff I couldn't afford or I picked something else over when they were out. I got lucky in the late 80s. My wife and I were on a, a weekend up in Rockford, Illinois, which is about two hours north of where I live. And I came across, just driving on the street, came across Royal Hobbies. Uh, well, I've got to go in. So while my wife patiently waited in the car, I went in and came out with a big old brown shopping bag of traveler goodies from Judges Guild, from Paranoia Press. It was it was a great sale. I spent about thirty or forty dollars and walked out of there with just a ton of stuff. In fact, most of this stuff came from that sale. So, that's really all I have to say. Royal Hobbies, by the way, in Rockford. I looked it up online. They are still there. Uh, so, if you're in the area, go ahead and, and give them a stop. I don't know if they have role-playing anymore, but they're still there. They're a local shop. If you can do anything to support them, go right ahead. Uh, I'm all for supporting the local guys. And uh, I think that's really all I have to say about Judges Guild today. I will go into some of their uh, GM supplements. They did a GM screen as well as some booklets that you could actually keep your campaign notes in, depending on if you were at a Starbase or uh, on a planet. There were a lot of things you could do that helped you keep your game straight, and there was even a Navigator Star Trek book that you, as a player character, being the navigator of the ship, could have kept a log. So I'll show those in a future video. Um, I really enjoy Judges Guild, old products, uh, and uh, they are available on DriveThruRPG as well as uh, Far Future Enterprises. And I, I recommend the products from the late 70s and early 80s. I think they're fine quality, and I think they're definitely worth owning. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. And if you like it, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time from page 121. Well, that closes the book on another episode of page 121. Please leave your comments below, and if you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.